simple question, but you know, what was it about Oregon, why you uh, you wanted to transfer to? Yeah, I just I knew the opportunity. Um, talking with Coach Lanning and you know, kind of what it all presented. Uh, it was really a no brainer, and you know, with everyone coming back and just kind of knowing what was coming in as well, um, it was just uh, like I said, a no brainer, a lot of fun. So. What's the adjustment period been like for you? How are you liking Eugene so far? It's been good. I love Eugene. I love the area. It's closer to home, so I can't complain. And uh, the adjustment period has been real, you know, uh, being new to any place and, you know, kind of transferring. Uh, there's the, the ebbs and flows that you learn and grow through. But, um, you know, being where I'm at, you know, in this my last year, it's been super refreshing to be able to have that. And this group of guys, have you gotten to know? few of them well in, in these few weeks and what's it been? For sure. T time has flown, but, you know, a lot of guys, you know, just the time spent together. And, you know, Coach Lanning does a good job of being able to keep us all close to one another and kind of maximize the time that we have. And, uh, you know, I, I'd say we've gotten pretty close in the time that we've had. How important was the history with, with Marcus and you being from Hawaii as well, uh, the, the factor in your decision? It was huge, you know, as someone you always look up to and, you know, kind of as a quarterback from Hawaii, that was someone we always watch. And I love turning on the, you know, TV and being able to watch him when, when I was younger and um, now having obviously the relationship that we've had and just being able to text back and forth. Um, that's something, you know, as a little kid, I still smile and, you know, don't ever take for granted. So um, I'd say in the decision process, it was just cool to kind of have that and being able to talk through it together. So. Different programs, different coaches with him, and, and it's here now. But did you pick his brain at all, at all about coming here, of just what his thoughts were? Yeah, I, I think more on the lifestyle side. You know, uh, our moms have connected, and you know they're just a great family. So, been super helpful in terms of, you know, where to stay, you know, what to do, and what to navigate food, food spots, and stuff like that. So, um, I think the little things like that help a how ton. Do you, how do you go about navigating the? competition aspect of this with yeah. Dante specifically, but also yeah. kind of has to be a bit of a mentor to not just him, but to a room of young guys. Yeah, I've, I've been in a bunch of competitions. Uh, I've been in um, a bunch of rooms where it's either mentoring or learning and kind of the combination of the two. And, you know, I kind of look at it as you, no matter your age, you can always learn and no matter your age, you can always lead. So um, whatever I I'm able to do that day or whatever situation, I feel like we can only help each other. And uh, in a competition, you know, it's you versus you. And at the end of the day, best players will play. How did you go about organizing the first get together with the receivers in Southern California? I realize spring break, that's easy, yep. but doing it where you're not even here a month. I mean, yep. how, how quick do you get guys together and why, why was that important to you? Um, it's important, one, it's continuity. Um, you gotta be able to create connection off the field to be able to have it on the field. And then, you know, two, there's a lot of veterans in, in this, uh, I'd say the offensive unit, but as a team, and uh, they kind of knew, you know, the, the time is not on our hands and we got to, you know, make the most of it. So uh, we all kind of just dedicated like, hey, let's go do it this weekend. Came together, whether it's the older guys, the younger guys, whoever could go, we made it happen. And um, it's got to be an emphasis for sure. We're in number eight and being another quarterback here from Hawaii, do you feel like that puts any extra pressure on you or kind of shoes to fill and expectations and stuff like that? Yeah, I love it. You know, it's, it's something that you want, you know, and that's why you come here. Um, I think initially wearing the eight, uh, I think I didn't want to in the sense that, you know, I have so much respect for Marcus and what he's done. And, um, you know, I, that's a guy I always look up to, but also being able to wear it's even better. So uh, super excited for that. Um, and like I said, it's just, being able to be my best and for the guys, for my teammates, and you know, ultimately go win games. Speaking of shoes to fill, I mean, you're coming in and replacing Bo Nix, who had a, a great career here. Have you talked to him at all and kind of what's your, your mindset and just trying to be the next guy here? Yeah, I've, I've filled a bunch of shoes. You know, I've, you know, it's the next quarterback up. It's time. It's ebbs and flows. You know, next, you know, after me, there'll be another one. So um, I'm just doing my part and definitely have had, you know, talks with Bo and him being able to, you know, come through to practice during his off time, I guess, through the process. And then, um, yeah, just little conversations here and there. But, um, you know, I think that's what's really cool about Oregon is you have access to a bunch of guys who've done it and who are going to go do it in the NFL. And um, that's, that's very cool. You well, just trying to find your experience. Going to Oklahoma helped transferring here now, just already having one of those reacclimation periods under your belt? Great question. Uh, of course, I think. You know, my first transfer, there's a lot of things that you kind of let slip through the cracks and not knowing uh, whether it's your daily routine and that switching up. Um, I think I 
was able to know that, you know, at times I, I let that um, fall through the cracks, but now just keeping that emphasis of daily routines, trying to find, you know, my routine here. And then also, um, you know, learning as, as fast as possible. I think uh, how versatile and flexible you can be within offense and continuing to learn and grow. I think that's really refreshing in my last year of college is, you know, being able to continue to grow and, and learn. You mentioned trying to find go-to food spots. In yep. Eugene, with talking to Marcus and others, I mean, do you have do you have ones now? Yeah, I've I've learned some have changed and some have still stayed. But um, I'm a big you know guy on food. I found this place. Marcus didn't give it to me, but I found this one on Fifth Street. It's called Blended. I think it's new though. So, uh, love acai bowls. So, love fruits. I just found out I really love kiwi. So uh, that's been refreshing. Um, and uh, yeah, just little things like that. I think more, more importantly, hotels and where to stay. You know, I heard it's uh, pretty crazy uh, kind of to find a place to stay here in the season. Is that basically what you're going to be doing in the interim is just staying in different hotels? Or, or, I mean, what, oh, no, I, I've got a spot. Apartment? I think okay, it's more like now. when family comes up. Sorry uh, to clarify, okay. but oh, yeah. when family comes up, because now they can come more, right? Being, you know, closer to Hawaii. Yeah. Um, we can't have, you know, 15, 20 people in the house. So right. we're going to have to, you know, navigate that. <laughs> what, what you play for some of the best offenses in the country. What was it about this one that intrigued you? And I guess what are your thoughts on just Will Stein's offense and how you fit into it? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's track record. You know, what coach has been able to do at a bunch of different spots um, at a bunch of different levels as well. Um, I also think, you know, proven concept, right? Like being here and seeing all the guys who've done what they've done to a thousand yard plus receivers, quarterback to stone, you know, 4,000 plus yards with 40 plus touchdowns. And then also, you know, winning a bunch of games, you know, which is the main thing. And uh, I think when you look at it as an offensive side of, or side of the ball, it's, it's how do you continue to be ahead of the chains and score a bunch of points. So, and they've been able to do that. So that for me was very intriguing. We gave Bo a lot of autonomy, probably as much as any quarterback in college football last yep. year. You said that you have that as well. Mm -hmm. How comfortable do you feel with that level of command, a six-year guy, yes, but yep. with that level of command of a new offense to where you could check in and out, seemingly it will? For sure, yeah. I, I think it's uh, a lot of experience, you know, playing in a bunch of different atmospheres and games uh, and as well offenses. It's just, you know, different terminology. You know, I always joke around, but it's like you're in Japanese five the first time and slowly you work back to, you know, hopefully being in Japanese one. But uh as I continue to learn and grow, I think uh, the checks are, are endless. You know, it's something that I'm not uh, not used to. I've, I've done, and uh, it's just doing it in a different way and learning our terminology. Last week, Tez described you as a goofball. How do you kind of balance, you know, being one of the guys, but also being a leader in this locker room? Yeah, I, I tell everyone, you know, I love to have a lot of fun off off the field, but when I'm on the field, it's it's a flip that switches, you know, or, or switch that flips, right? And uh, being able to be on the field, uh, it's just different, you know, and, and my command, you know, I always tell them, hey, we'll have our fun off the field. But when we get on the field, you know, being able to have that command, that uh, demanding um, kind of, you know, character is, is because of how close we are off the field. So I'll, I'll love them up, you know, off the field and same will they. And, you know, when we get on the field, we we get after it. So, so what type of goofball is it? Are you a comedian? Are you practical jokes? What is it? Yeah, it can be sarcastic. It can be fun. It can be straightforward. I like to keep people guessing. You know, I like to kind of catch people off guard and see who they really are. Um, but that's been a lot of fun. You know, I enjoy that. Um, I enjoy people and learning different, you know, people as well. You know, I think just connecting with everyone. That's why I say, like, in my last year of college, it's been so refreshing. Like, you know, imagine if someone was at a place for six years, you know, how stagnant or, you know, stale it can become. So, uh, it's it's been very refreshing. What do you have planned for first dime time retreat out here? I love that you asked that. Well, it it's in the talks. We already booked the Airbnb. It's happening in June. Um, we'll probably take it to the coast, a little north northwest of here, maybe an hour and a half. So I'll let you guys do your digging. <laughs> um, but we'll have a party bus there. We'll have some throwing sessions. We'll have some good times and we'll have some goodie bags. So um, that's a huge piece of of everything we do. Where does that all come from? Because you know, people will say, oh, well, because of NIL, it makes yeah. it easier for quarterbacks to do that. But not every quarterback in the country is doing that. For sure. And reading stories about you in Oklahoma, it seemed like you were a mentor in the room to Jackson yep. and other guys. Yep. Where does all this come from? 
Just, I, I think, you know, at a young age, I had someone, Mackenzie Milton, you know, he's a guy at uh, Milani. Uh, he really almost came here, but he went to UCF with Scott Frost and uh, he was just a guy that mentored me at a young age at Milani. And then when I went to UCF, you know, him going through his injury, it's, he was that big brother that uh, I hope everyone has, you know, and I think my experience with that is I've been around a lot of great people that helped me and I've seen other people that, you know, can kind of push down on a, a younger person. And for me, it's, it's important, you know, everyone's important, you know, because you don't know at what time uh, someone may came, come in, you know, whether it's a young freshman that may play, you don't know, um, you know, the season kind of happens. And I just kind of have that approach of everyone matters. How do we, you know, get everyone involved and um, how does everyone feel, you know, valued? When you have to work with a whole new receiving core, like the older guys, the proven guys, Tez, Treshawn, Evan, yep. certainly, that's kind of a given. Yep. What does the freshmen have to do to be like Nick Anderson was, where they don't have to rely on a true freshman or a redshirt freshman, but if they're going to, what did he do that these guys have to do? Mental reps, uh, extra time, obviously very talented, but I think the combination of knowing what you're doing um, being really confident in what you're doing, I think will give you the best chance of playing, you know, and I think they all know that is how you work, how you do what you do, uh, coming out every single day and being the same person, you know, good, bad, ugly, whatever it is. Um, and I just appreciate, I don't know, maybe when I was a freshman, I, I guess in my eyes, we were never like that, but just a freshman coming in, you can definitely tell how mature they are, um, how they work. And um, I appreciate that, you know, once being one, so. Oklahoma and Oregon are both schools who've had strong quarterback histories in the last decade or so. How does how coming here differed from when you first arrived at Oklahoma? Um, I would say being used to it. Uh, you know, I've obviously played at places that had amazing quarterbacks, and that's exactly why I went there, you know, and obviously coming here too. But, um, you know, I've, I've filled shoes, I've done my part, and then also I've competed. And it's something that, you know, that's why I'm here, you know, to compete, to play, to go – have a chance to go win a natty. You know, that's exactly why you play the game. So um, something I'm used to, something that I uh, forever will be and super grateful. How do you go about developing chemistry with a new center, particularly one who's just doesn't have as much game experience, probably the yeah. least experienced center you've had in your college career? Yeah. Well, uh, luckily, even though he's least experienced at, you know, center, he's very experienced at guard. Um, and then as well as the other guys, just having a bunch of reps, I think uh, that helped him a ton you know, being able to play and at least get, you know, that action. I think whenever you get in the game, it's a little different than practice. Um, and I think that'll help him a ton whenever it comes to, you know, helping our communication in terms of protections, run game, checks, the whole nine. So um, I love him to death, not just because it's 808, but, you know, just being able to be with a guy who's just passionate and plays his heart out. I was going to ask you, though, how, how much does that help with the, the Hawaii connection with a guy like Poncho or some of these other guys here? Yeah, I think it's just that extra connection. You know, I, I've always known of his family, you know, Ope and then obviously Ponce, like people I've always grown up knowing from a distance and either played against or uh, played with. But um, yeah, I just appreciate it. You know, being around a Hawaii guy, it makes you feel at home, kind of gives you that uh, extra reminder. You know, you, you got people around you um, and uh, it's something that I'm super blessed to have. What stood out about the, the receiving core that you are working with, like from the guys who worked with you in SoCal to the yeah. guys you're just working with in six practices here so far? Talented. You know, talent's not going to be our, our limitation. You know, it's, you know, to us, it's, it's always how can you, you know, be one up in the mental game, you know, know your job cold, continue to push and, and find answers, you know, whether it's on the fly, pre-snap, communication. I think that's something you can never be too good at, you know, knowing your job cold. So, um, I think that'll be it, and and that's for everyone. Um, but as we continue to grow as, and learn together, it's been it's been really good through the six days.